guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a tag for you since I figured it's kind of been a while since I've done one. I've been doing a lot of hauls recently and spending a lot of money. So I figured I'd take a break for that, from that and do a tag. So today I'm going to be doing the reading habits tag. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Question one is, do you have a certain place you read at home? And my answer, no, not really. I like to read on the couch and I like to read on my bed. And that's pretty much it. I don't have like a designated space to read. I kind of wish I did. I kind of wish I had like my own library, my own plushy chairs. But I don't at the moment. But I do enjoy reading anywhere that I can. Question two is bookmark or random piece of paper? And I would have said um, random piece of paper before, but I just got bookmarks from Biblioprints on Etsy, and she's actually open it, opening a new website January 1st, so, and I'm sure I'll talk about it in another one of my videos. But I just got bookmarks from her, and I have been blessed to receive quite a few, quite a few promotional um bookmarks that I'm really weird about. I like to match my bookmark to the book that I'm reading. So if I don't have one for that specific book, I use any bookmark I can get my hand on. But I try to always use bookmarks. Number three is, can you just stop reading or do you have to stop at the end of a page or chapter? And I prefer to stop at the end of a chapter, like at the beginning of a new chapter. If I can, that is what I strive to do. But if I can't, I try to find a page that ends with a period. Like it's the end of a thought or it's the end of a statement. That is what I try to do if I can't end up a chapter. But if I know that I'm just stopping for like a second to go and help my mom do something or help my dad do something, anything like that, I'll stop for a second. But I prefer if I have to like stop for a while, I prefer to end at a chapter. So I can start a new page all over again. Question four is, do you eat or drink while reading? And no, not normally. Sometimes I'll um, drink water, but normally I stop reading. Like I don't read and drink and I don't read and eat. I just, I can't do it. One, the multitasking itself is a lot to think about because I don't want to get anything on my book. And I want to be so focused on my book that I forget that there is a real world where I need to do things. And on top of that, I actually don't really get super hungry or thirsty when I read. It's like my body completely forgets that those things are a necessity. And I can just like sit down and read and forget about it. But if I do need something, I'll just stop what I'm doing for a second and eat or drink and then come back to it. So no, I try not to eat or drink while I'm reading. Number five kind of goes hand in hand about what I said with multitasking, and that is music or TV while reading. And the answer to that is neither. I hate noise. I like it to be completely silent when I read so that I can focus all of my attention on the words that I'm retaining into my eyeballs and brain. Um, I kind of get distracted easily just a wee bit. But not only that, I like to be able to be completely invested in their story and living their story. So I don't try not to listen to any music or watch any TV or do anything while I'm reading because I just don't like noise. Angela from Coffee and Chapters posted on Instagram a couple days ago in her story. She got the greatest bookmark from one of her, one of her friends and it said, if my book is open, your mouth is shut. And I need that everywhere because I don't like talking when I'm reading. I don't like any noise when I'm reading. And that is just, you know, my life motto. Like I need it in a shirt. I need it in a blanket. I need it everywhere because yes. Number six is one book at a time or several. And in recent weeks, this answer has actually changed just a wee bit. Uh, I got a lot of reviews, review books, the month, the end of November, really 
yeah, I guess it was the end of November to do for December in January. Um, and I was, they were just like coming in and it was just a hot stinking mess for my brain. Like I couldn't, I, I was struggling. Um, not so much with the amount of books. That didn't bother me. I can read books pretty easily. I wasn't scared of that. My thing is most of them were ebooks and I am not a huge fan of that format. If I can, I will get the book in paperback because I just like holding it and flipping through it and flipping through it and I feel like I read faster when I have a paperback. Reading on my phone it's like ugh. it just kind of drags me down. So I had a lot of ebooks to read for the month and then I got a couple paperbacks so I was just like ah! So a friend of mine from Instagram was talking that she reads um, a paper book, paper book, paperback, an ebook, and a nonfiction. She kind of has them going, but the ebook and the paperback are normally different genres. So I did do that um, last week, I believe. I had a suspense contemporary book going and then I also had a histor historical book going on my phone. I finished the paperback and I actually finished another paperback and I still haven't finished the ebook. So I'm going to try to focus on reading both. I have another book to start. So I'm going to try to focus on doing both of them. I'll see if I can do it. But if not, I do have time set aside to focus on my ebooks. So the real answer to this question is, if I can help it, I'm reading one fiction book at a time and maybe some nonfiction. But if I can't help it, I will pick up a couple books, but normally from different genres. Number seven is reading at home or everywhere. I prefer to read at home. Again, I get distracted easily, so reading out and about is just a little rough for me to get my mind focused on the characters and really be able to pick up and learn things and retain information. So I do prefer to read at home. Number eight is reading out loud or silently in your head. And I am a silently in your head type of person. Like if I'm reading something out loud, I overthink and I get into my head and then I literally sound like I don't know how to read. Like I will mess up the word the or and. The easiest words I just will completely fall over myself so I do prefer to read silently in my head and I don't feel like I have a storyteller's kind of voice. Um, my grandpa did, my dad does, my cousin does, my sister does too really if, if I think about it my sister does too. I just don't have the annotation and the vocal to really tell stories. So I prefer to read silently in my head. Number nine is do you read ahead or skip pages? And again, normally no, but if you watch a couple weeks ago, I was talking about my November wrap up and I came across this book. I won't mention it. If you're really interested, you can check out the video and it'll be linked in the description. And I literally DNF'd it. I could not finish it and I kind of skipped ahead and uh, skimmed through a couple of the back pages just to see if it got any better. Spoiler alert, it didn't, um, but DNFs are really probably the only thing that I would ever skip ahead, um, skim through, that kind of thing, but if I'm actually really, really, really enjoying the book, I don't care how long it is, no, I do not skip ahead, and no, I don't really skip pages either. Number 10 is kind of a con uh, controversy around, um, booktube and the book world kind of a bit and that is breaking the spine or keeping it new and I am a big believer in keeping it new now if I buy the book broken if I buy the spine little messed up a little loved I don't have a problem with it um but I prefer to keep my spines beautiful and fresh and gorgeous um Especially my big novels, my big books, I prefer that they are in as beautiful condition as can be. And that's kind of asking for a lot for someone who actually 
pretty much only buys used books but I found so many in beautiful perfect condition that I'm okay with it again I just kind of prefer for my spines to be pretty and not broken but my um, little love inspired books a lot of them are broken and just separated so there's not much I can do about those but if the spine is broken, I have a tendency to lend those out. That lend the ones where the spines are already broken because I, I'm kind of like, oh, that's already happened. They can't get any worse. So I tend to lean towards lending those out than my really pretty ones. Number 11 is do you write in your books? No. Short, easy answer, no. I don't even write in my Bible, which I kind of want to get a Bible that I can write in and like get my notes, but... I was always taught, you know, writing on paper with lines where other words were not in it was kind of the thing. And I just don't think it looks nice. Like, if you write in your books, awesome. If you have thoughts, great. But I don't write in my books. No. Please excuse all the noise. My brother and sister are playing with our dog. They're running around our house. So there's that. Number 12 is when do you find yourself reading? In the morning, in the afternoon, at night, or just whenever you can? And I read pretty much all over the place. I read in the morning sometimes, I read in the afternoon sometimes, I read at night sometimes. If I'm super busy, I read whenever I can. I read all the time, all day, every day. Um, well, most of the time. But I do find myself reading more at night because I can stay up, it's quiet, no noise, no talking, nothing. It's just me and my book closed up in my room or sitting on my couch. So I do tend to enjoy reading at night, but I can read throughout the day. Time doesn't bother me. Number 13 is what is the best setting to read or what is your best setting to read? And I like it when it's kind of when it's gloomy outside, when it's raining or snowing. I love reading when it's snowing. It's just so peaceful. Um, but when it's quiet and just kind of gloomy, because I don't want to be out doing anything, so I'll be inside reading. That is great. Curled up with a super fuzzy blanket and awesome socks, because I am the queen of awesome socks. I love me some awesome cozy socks. Um, just curled up with myself and no noise of talking just everybody reading a book or all watch a movie together but my perfect setting is raining and snowing and gloomy I just oh I love it number 14 is what do you do first read or watch and this is in the adaptations uh, movie type thing and I actually am not a big, if the book was made into the movie, I don't really watch the movie or read the book. Um, if I find out later that the movie was a book, I might be interested in reading the book. But, like, if I read a book and find out that it's going to be a movie, I'm just like, oh, cool, whatever. Like, even if it sounds really good, I might watch it. I don't know. It just really depends. But normally, I will read the book and then find out it's a movie or I'll watch the movie and then find out it's a book. Either way, I never know going into things that it's either or. So neither, I guess, or both. I'm not sure. Which do you, which format do you prefer? Ebook, audiobook, or physical copy? And as I've mentioned in quite a bit of these, I am a physical copy person. I love actually having the paperback in my hands or on rare occasion the hardcover in my hands. Just everything about it. The smell, the feel, how fast I can fly through them. I don't, I just feel like I connect with the characters better, easier, faster in physical copy. Some books like novellas, if they are only on um, ebook, I enjoy those because they're short. I can blow through them. So ebooks for novellas that aren't in a collection because a lot of the authors that I love are coming out with collections and I'm so excited. But I prefer physical copies. I haven't tried audiobooks yet. Not sure. 
I'm thinking I might try that when I get a car and I'm doing commutes and stuff. I might try audiobooks to see how I like them. But again, I'm not sure if I can do all the multitasking and all the brain activity that's going on. Not sure about it. Not sure. But I'm a physical copy person. 98% of the time. 16 is, do you have any unique habits when you read? And honestly, I don't think so. I mean, no. But if you do, I would love to know if you have any unique habits. Maybe you guys have a habit that I do and you think it's unique, and then I'd be like, hey, I'm unique with you. But I really can't think of anything. So I'm going to say no for this one. And last but not least, 17 is, do your book series have to match? Again, this is an age-old question that can spark up some, some, oh, it has to, no, it doesn't, blah, 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 in the book world. And I like when my book series match. I will not lie. They look beautiful together. All the spines all pretty. The covers all pretty. The colors cohesive. But if they don't match like I'm thinking of two series at the moment where by the same author one series is gorgeous like I love looking at the covers I love seeing my the spines sitting on my shelves they're beautiful and then she has another series where the first book and the second the second and third book look the same they match but the first book looks like it's a completely different book. So I guess, yes, my series have to match. I prefer them to match. Um, and I like either all paperback or all hardcover. There's a couple that are a little rough and tumble because I don't have all paperback of one or all hardcover of another. Just how publication came out. And it's okay. It's fine. But it's not my preference. Does that make sense? Like, I prefer for my series to match, and I prefer for them to be all paperback, all hardcover. But I will take what I can get. Beggars can't be choosers. So, that's my answer. So that's it. Those were my answers to the 17 questions. Wow, this is a long tag. I If you guys made it to the end of this, Collapse for you. I am so proud. <laughs> I'm sorry that this was so long. I didn't realize it was such a long tag. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to tag... Let's tag Miss Lindsay from Books for Christian Girls. And Miss Angela from Coffee and Chapters. And Miss Melanie from Christian YA Books and More. If you guys have already done this. If you have, well... Check out your videos. I'm going to scounge through and make sure that I haven't done them. But either way, if I didn't tag you, you guys are welcome to do it. I will put the questions in the description. Go ahead and answer in the comments below. I would love to hear your answers. I really hope I'm not alone in these things. <sighs> Check out my blog for the love of Christian fiction .blogspot.com. I post there every Friday, new reviews up to date of Miss Julie Classen's The Innkeeper of Ivy Hill. Loved it! This link will be in the description box below. Go ahead and check out my Instagram for the love of Christian fiction, where I post whenever. But I'm always active. I'm always talking to you guys and liking and posting stories. So I am more active on there than you might think. But I'm active. Go ahead and check me out if you want to. I hope you guys have a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, happy New Year. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>